Good morning everyone and welcome to our backyard. In today's video I'm going to take you with me as I show you what I'm doing right now to prepare for the upcoming hummingbird migration season. It's July 22nd and it's a really good time for me to start looking at my plants and everything with a critical eye in respect to hummingbirds. So in this video, I'm going to talk about these four things. I'm gonna look at taking an inventory of my hummingbird plants. I'm gonna look at if there's any plants that I need to replace. I'm gonna talk a little bit about fertilization to get ready. And then finally, um, just a little bit about hummingbird feeders. Hummingbird migration can start at the beginning of August with the male ruby-throated hummingbirds coming first. Usually we don't see a big influx of hummingbirds until closer to um, the end of August, beginning of September. But we have hummingbirds all year round. In fact, we had a couple over winter with us and we also have one or two female hummingbirds that have nested in the area. So we have hummingbirds regularly, but hummingbird migration season is when there are lots of hummingbirds migrating through. And so I wanna make sure that I'm ready. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is my plant inventory that I have specifically for hummingbirds. So these are the plants that I have specifically planted for hummingbirds. They flower and the hummingbirds in my yard absolutely love these flowers. So what's important is that I go through each one of these plants to take an inventory and really assess the plant health. Does it look healthy? Is it flowering? Is there anything that I need to do to get it to that point because right now is a really good time to make alterations if there is appears to be something that um, is not great with the plants. So as I'm going through, if there's any plants that I need to replace, now is the time to do it if needed. I don't really have a lot of plants that I've identified. I do have a couple that I lost while we were on vacation. But um, outside of that, I don't have any that I have um, identified as needing to be replaced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you along with me as I look at the plant health of the different plants. So the first one on my list is kufia or cigar plant. And what I'm looking for is how well are the plants flowering? Does my current hummingbird go to the flowers? Is it flowering nicely or does it need to be boosted a little bit? As I take a look at the different kufia that I have in the yard, they are flowering very, very well. And my current hummingbird is going to kufia. And so I just want to regularly fertilize um, but there's not any action really that I need to take at this time for my cigar plants. The next one I'm taking a look at is my cardinal climber. And this one is a real favorite of the hummingbirds. It is behind this year. The growth is behind last year. And the difference being is this year our cardinal climber has been flowering pretty much all summer long, but has not put a lot of growth in the leaves. It has slowed down a little bit um, in its flowering. And just taking a look at the health, I would like to see it put on a little bit more foliage before it really starts to go wild in its flowering. So 
I'm going to put um, a link to last year's video to show you oh, around this time, it's a couple weeks later, but around this time, what this vine looked like last year as opposed to this year. We do have the Cardinal Climber vine placed in a couple areas in our yard and it has been consistently performing this way throughout our yard. And with getting my plants ready for hummingbird migration, I predominantly use these two types of fertilizer. I use multiple types of fertilizer in general, but right now, and, and I'm gonna create a video a little bit later on my fertilization that I do do in the yard. But right now I am just looking at getting my plants um, ready for this migration. And so the two predominant fertilizers that I use are from Espoma, which is um, organic, um, organic fertilizer. And I use both Bloom and Grow. So at first what I'm going to use for my Cardinal Climber is this one. I am going to use the Organic Grow, um, this all-purpose plant food. And it is just a solid 222. These are water soluble and so they get fed instantly. And that is why I am using this. I also use um, time-released organic fertilizers. So um, I don't want to discount that, but just with the eye of getting things ready, these are the two fertilizers that I'm predominantly using. The next plant on my list is Rusellia. And this plant has been flowering all summer long and my female hummingbird has been coming to it all summer long. So I am going to give it a little bit of a boost. It's flowering okay, but it isn't flowering just all out. Now granted, it's been really, really hot here in the upper southeast Texas Gulf Coast region and we've had a month of high hot temperatures and the plants have been stressed but this is a tropical plant and so it certainly will benefit from a little bit of fertilizer and in pretty much all the rest of these flowers the fertilizer I am using is the bloom and again the bloom fertilizer is the espoma one here on the left. The next plant is salvia. My salvia is, is, is blooming, but it isn't blooming heavily, and that's my fault. The purple is Amistad. This gorgeous pink is Amante. And I have made the mistake of letting it grow, grow, grow and I have not cut it back. And while it is flowering, I should have cut it back, and now I'm reluctant to cut it back because we're getting close to the migration season. And I'm afraid if I completely cut it back, I am not gonna have the blooms. So there was my dilemma. I should have cut it back, these two in particular, earlier. My planters of Hummingbird Falls are not doing well. They have not done well for me and they are not caring for their life. So I'm not gonna be able to count on these. I had purchased these for Hummingbird Migration. These, this is a new salvia for me and they have been too stressed and have not done well for me. The rest of my salvia is holding its own. Mystic Spires has been doing well. Misty, Misty has been doing well. 
I have cut it back twice now. It looks like I can cut the, the blooms back again. My bush salvia isn't doing the greatest. And neither is rock and fuchsia, but that's partly my fault because we were gone on vacation and did not water this as much as we should have. And I did lose one right here. But this heat has just been doing a number. The extended heat. The salvia has, has um, struggled somewhat in certain locations in my yard. So right now I am going to fertilize and water as needed um, to try to boost, not a lot, because I don't want to stress the plants even more, but um, trying to get them back in shape. I have five different porter weed in my yard. And this is the newest porter weed. It's certainly an interesting color oops, of flower. I don't think it's going to focus the best there. All of my porter weed plants are nice and healthy and growing vigorously but they've taken a little bit of a hiatus on blooming. So they're doing okay on blooming. But I'll be fertilizing them so they are blooming more like this. This is the blue porter weed and it is, as you can see, the sun is just coming out and um, it is blooming a little bit more than the rest of my porter weeds. And so I will be using the bloom fertilizer to make sure that my porter weeds are in full bloom within the next month. Firebush is a real important flower for hummingbirds. All pollinators really love firebush. And you can see firebush my firebush are just flowering wonderfully. This one doesn't need um, a lot of fertilization. In fact, the only fertilizing that I do on this fi firebush is composting in the spring. So I'm going to get back here a little. And you can just see back in the back here, it is doing what it is supposed to be doing. It's in the hot southern bed that I have where a lot of my plants get baked. And firebush loves the heat and humidity. And the hummingbirds love firebush. My coral honeysuckle vine is a very important native vine, native to Texas. And I have um, this coral honeysuckle on both sides of my southern corner of my house. This is a really important vine because not only does it support hummingbirds and butterflies and all the pollinators. It also supports birds with its berries. And I have talked about this in, in other videos. Right now, the coral honeysuckle is blooming, but it's not blooming a lot. That is its normal cycle. So that is nothing unusual. But my plants in my pots can certainly benefit from a little bit of fertilizer. This is the second year they have been in these pots and I can tell that they are starting to need fertilization where this one in the ground is doing just fine, but my pots do need some fertilizer. So they will be getting fertilizer. My flame acanthus is also a native 
to Texas and my current hummingbird that we've had all season long has been coming to this every day and it's also taking somewhat of a break pretty much you can tell that it's been flowering quite a bit you can see it's flowered all along here and it's starting it's setting seed The issue with my fifth flame acanthus is it is getting somewhat overshadowed by the gorgeous Tithonia or Mexican sunflower. So this flame acanthus that I have on the end of the bed um, has grown beautifully, but it hasn't started flowering yet and some are competing with this Mexican sunflower. So I will not do this again next year because it's pretty important for my flame acanthus to be flowering beautifully during hummingbird migration season. But my dilemma has been, I also have lots of butterflies and the Tithonia is an absolute butterfly magnet. So I have not pulled the Tithonia down. And that is a decision um, that I have consciously made. My shrimp plants are over here on the edge of my shade bed. So they get beautiful morning sun, which they have appreciated. And they've started to put on a little bit of new growth, as you can see here. And so they stopped flowering a little bit while we were on vacation, but you can tell they're getting beautiful new blooms. So we're going to be fine. Now they're getting the water they needed. I think we underwatered, I had mentioned we'd underwatered a little bit while we were on vacation. So the shrimp plants are enjoying us being back. Sorry, uh, sorry about the bright um, sun. Usually I'm done taping before the sun comes out, but um, I'm contending with the sun, part of the sun anyway this morning. So last year, my Turk's cap was such an important piece of the flowers that I had for the hummingbirds and butterflies. And this year I've been very disappointed with how my Turk's, Turk's cap has grown and also performed. This is also a native and a, a Texas native. And I don't know, I, I honestly don't know why it's doing what it's doing. Um, so I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on why my Turk's cap is not performing as well as it should be. Again, our weather has been very different um, since we've lived down here. Um, the last couple of years have just been really odd, not only in the winter, but also this blast of summer heat that we've gotten um, in mid-June in the hundreds and these intense advisories, heat advisories that we've had and heat war warnings, excessive heat warnings, um, that's just not typical. And so the plants somewhat have struggled and our Turk's cap gets morning sun and total afternoon shade, but it still has not been happy this year. My tropical hibiscus has always been reliable Usually I have multiple blooms that are opening up daily. And I will have that pretty much day in and day out. Tropical hibiscus is does attract the hummingbirds. 
they don't go to it first, but they will go to it. I fertilize my tropical hibiscus once a month with specific specialty hibiscus fertilizer and it does very well. I will not change that and I do fertilize once a month and that's all I'll need to do for these guys. And then a new plant that I got this summer to replace the spring um, plants that I had in this planter. So this in particular is called a Terenia or wishbone flower and it has these beautiful tubular shaped flowers. That the hummingbirds are supposed to love. We'll see. This is a first year for me, but I did want to replace what I had here. I had a Lobelia and a Bidens that I was not happy with, and anyway, um, they they were done by the time I needed to replace them, and we'll see what the hummingbirds think of this Terenia. So again, for the fertilization piece, I predominantly are using these two types of fertilizers and mainly it's going it's this one and bloom has its total nitrogen phosphate and potash as 131 and of course that's to encourage blooms on the plants most of my plants have really good growth and I don't need much more growth although I do want the Cardinal Climber to do better, and so I will be fertilizing it with the Grow Fertilizer. So after I go through my gardens and look at the plants with a critical eye and what I need to do to get these plants into tip-top shape over the next month, the final thing I need to look at is my hummingbird feeders. And I'm going to link up top the video that I did on my favorite hummingbird feeder and just show you the different types that I've used throughout the years. But this one, hands down, is my favorite hummingbird feeder for the pure ease of cleaning. It has an ant moat in the center and you're, fi you ch you're supposed to fill that with water, which I do, but my birds love to come and drink out of the ant moat and so I'm finding that I have to um, replace the water in the ant moat, um, which is fine, but it's to keep the fire ants away from the nectar because they can be a pain. So the high perch feeder is my absolute favorite. I got mine from Wild Birds Unlimited and um, they're very easy to use and the hummingbirds like them but you can get this type of feeder anywhere. You can get it um, from Amazon. Um, you don't have to specifically get this brand. I just have a local, um, a local store that's very easy and convenient for me to get these um, hummingbird feeders. And also, I've talked to you um, about the Hummingbird Nectar Defender, and I use this all the time. And this is fantastic for protecting the nectar, keeping it safe, and keeping it fresh longer. And they say for up to two weeks. I do not do two weeks in hot weather down here. Um, I do one week or a little bit under, but I, even though this is a little bit expensive, I stand by this. And so I will have multiple feeders out. Currently, I have one, two, three, four feeders, and I will have even up to 12 during hummingbird migration season that I have placed throughout the yard. All right. Well, those are the steps that I go through when I look with a critical eye and getting my backyard and my plants into tip-top shape for the upcoming hummingbird, hummingbird migration season. So I really appreciate you joining me. 
I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you again. Thanks. Bye-bye.